Welcome back, Stas23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I have for you the Giant Mouse Ace Nazca. Uh, this knife right here in this configuration comes in at $225. You can also get it in a titer titanium scaled version for $285, and I can definitely see the lines of Vox and Anzo in this one. And let's get some specs out of the way so you know how big or how small this knife really is. You have a total length of 7.48 inches. So it's a medium to larger size knife. Blade length of 3.15 inches. A grip area from here to the back of 3 and 5 eighths of an inch. Your handle scale thickness comes in average at 0 0.50 inches. And the close width in the pocket is 1.20 inches. The blade stock thickness on this one is 0.14 inches and the behind the edge thickness is around 20 thousandths sharpened at 24 degrees per side. Now this is a really good size and weight for most people's everyday carry knife and <laughs> with them using for the first time the axis style lock and cr what they call their crossbar lock. This knife is completely ambidextrous and uh, let's take a closer look at this blade. You have a nice clip point blade shape with a vertical belt satin on the flats and this top swedge. And you have a horizontal satin on the flats. You have a very acute point that will be great for piercing tasks or doing these drag cuts like that. Uh, you have a pretty generous size sharpening uh, notch cut right here that should give you a lot of sharpening life. As you can see, it doesn't thicken up to about right there. So you should have a lot of sharpening life before it starts to widen in the back, right? And you have a nice little thumb scoop right here with some well-placed jimping. Uh, Vox does a great job of putting jimping where it should be. And right there where that thumb lands, uh, it, it's effective if you like that. It is some fine cut jimping, so it's going to grab a hold of that thumb when you put pressure onto it. Uh, the dual thumb studs are comfortable and they stay out of the cutting path. And why don't we test this M390 out and see how well it performs. The knife came hair shaving sharp from the factory and is passing through the cardboard with minimal effort. However, your entire edge is all belly, so if you're cutting longer strips of cardboard, you may end up sliding out of the cut because of the natural arc we do when we're doing that type of cutting. Since these are fairly short cuts, it was no problem at all and it felt like it remained sharp. Uh, I did get hung up once in the sharpening notch area, but once I did that, I didn't do it again. Now we're testing the ergos and how well that edge is still biting into this pine 2x4. Uh, the edge was fine. I'm able to make the fine curly cues pretty easily and the knife was really comfortable in the hammer grip at least until I got to the end where I was uh, using the most force. I noticed my arms were starting to get really fatigued. My forearms were cramping up and it's mainly because the back of the handle starting to thin out uh, near the butt end of the knife pretty bad and I did not want it to uh, spin in the hand and felt like I had to hold it very, very tight to keep my grip. With the blade being all belly, this knife really excelled in these slicing cuts, just like this through this uh, material. And also doing these pinch cut, uh, pinch grip cuts, dragging that tip through things uh, also excels. And it, it was fairly easy to do all that stuff. Uh, the edge was still nice and sharp, but I felt it lacked a bit of bite to it and uh, I was able to still handle all these tasks because like I said, it was sharp, just not any toothiness to that edge.
When I get to the denim, this is when I really notice that the edge does not have a whole lot of bite to it because it felt like I was really having to put pressure down and as you can see, it's, it's getting a little uh, few stragglers toward the end. Right away into the sisal rope, it, the edge did not want to bite into it. And you can see it kind of skating off. It's requiring a good bit of pressure to get all the way through the uh, rope. It was, I was pretty certain the knife will perform much better once I do my first initial sharpening. That said, I was still able to uh, pull off 30 cuts with the knife fairly uh, easily. It wasn't, you know, the worst ever. But like I said, I did have to put a good bit of pressure and that's usually common for these factory edges. They're usually over polished, over stropped and I think that's the case here. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed that cutting footage. I think it performed pretty well um, for a factory edge. Now, let's take a look at the action. Like I said before, you have dual thumb studs. They're fairly comfortable, uh, and you have an axis bar style lock. Um, you just pull back on it, and this thing is a free dropper. Pretty uh, decent access to those thumb studs. Comfortable uh, in both left and right hand deployment. Um, being this that is an axis lock, it's going to overcome that spring and then this one comes out pretty nice and snappy. This is riding on ceramic ball bearings and uh, that really makes this a pretty fidgety knife in my opinion. Now one thing that I'm not super fond of is uh, the Omega springs or whatever type of springs they're using for to keep the, this uh, in the lock position. When you get a pull back on it, it's a pretty strong spring, at least for me. And it's not so bad when you're overcoming this way, but whenever I'm pulling back, it's a little uncomfortable for me. And it can be a little slick because the top is um, nice and smooth, but you do have some ridging right here. They just don't stick up super high. Uh, let's see, it might be about the same as this, but this one has a good bit of texture to it. So I don't know, I haven't had many problems slipping off, but just something to note, the springs are, the tension on the springs are a little bit stronger than say a Benchmade or a Hogue. All right, let's take a look at these scales. You have some really nice uh, OD green micarta scales that have a, I'd call it, they're definitely not a polished finish. You get a good bit of grip. Love, love the texture. Um, that's the type of finish I like to see on micarta. Even though I know when you polish it, it really brings out all the texture of the uh, material underneath. The scales are contoured, very nicely done. And your hardware on the knife, your pivot is a T8. And unfortunately, your body screws are T6 along with your clip screws. While we're talking about the clip, you have a deep carry wire pocket clip. So it shouldn't get snagged on things as easy because everything's nice and rounded over and uh, fairly deep carry. Let's check it out in the pocket. Now it is tip up left or right hand carry. So that along with the dual studs and this axis style lock makes it a completely ambidextrous knife. Um, it has a good bit of good enough ramp in there. It goes in the pocket nicely. Now it does have a whole lot of tension on this. So depending on how thick your pants are, it might take a, a little bit extra force to get it in there. That's how much you have sticking out. Uh, kind of gives you something to grab a hold to, even uh, though it's a deep carry pocket clip. It, I, I like it. it. It rides nicely and it stays out of the way in the pocket. Now let's briefly touch back on the ergos. Uh, for the most part, I thought it was extremely comfortable. For all your normal EDC tasks, it's nice and comfortable, depending on your hand size at least. 
Um, I'm not usually a fan of these dedicated trolls like this, especially when you have, you know, two little ridge spots. But luckily, my medium-sized hands fits perfect right there. And then this one wraps there, this one wraps there. So my hands fit nice on this knife. Um, if you have a large, extra-large hands, it could possibly fall out on these ridges, which may make it a little uncomfortable. Now, the, the thickness is nice on it. It's, it's not, you know, too thin in this d dimension, but... How this gets a little skinnier back here, whenever I was starting to put that pressure into that 2x4, felt like the, the knife wanted to kind of turn in the hand a little bit. And uh, just as long as that's not something you care about or plan on doing with the knife, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, you have a, I think this is a brass or bronze backspacer uh, in the back. It, it doesn't weight the knife down that much, I don't, I don't find. But the balance point is right there where the uh, thumb stud uh, placement is. You have polished uh, stainless steel liners that have been heavily uh, skeletonized to reduce weight in there. As you can see, top and bottom. Let's take a look at it on the scale. First in grams. We have 115.5 grams and 4.07 ounces. I think that's perfectly doable for an EDC folder, at least for me it is. Real quick, we'll take a look at the lock. We already talked about, um, you know, the pressure. So one good thing about that extra pressure is, is the, the robustness of that, you know, bar being pushed forward onto the tang. So you have absolutely no smidget of any play in any direction this thing's a bank vault so very good on the lockup um very very nice quick size comparison spyderco pm2 and the para 3 uh much closer to the para 3 size except we have the hogue ritter rsk and the mini rsk i would say it's right in between those two and now for my nitpicks and complaints uh, i'm not a huge fan of the satin finish uh, it's a fingerprint magnet and I just, I don't, I don't, I'd much rather either a good stone wash or, I don't know, maybe a rougher sat. I don't know. I'm not a huge satin fan. So, you know, take it or leave it. Um, and this is not going to be an issue for, you know, a lot of people like this, but I'm not a huge fan of how much pressure it takes to pull back the axis bar. Uh, it does help out uh, the, the action, gives it a nice snappy action and nice and fidgety let's see oh i can almost almost reverse flick it yep i can reverse flick it so yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think that's really a you know knock and another thing that's not really hurting it but i would much rather see t8 hardware throughout so overall value now at 225 dollars there this that market is completely saturated so the only way I'm going to re recommend the knife is if it's something that you love aesthetically and it looks like it would fit in your EDC rolls. Uh, and nothing that I talked about negatively uh, is something that is a deal breaker for you. Then, yeah, it's a really good knife. I think it would make a great EDC. Um, well, well executed and, um, you know, nice and slicey. Carries well. I think it looks very nice as well. So you got to be the judge of that. It's not something that I'm going to say, you know, definitely go out to get because it's not, you know, doing anything, you know, different or wowing me in any certain way. But it's a great knife. And uh, I think you'll be happy if you decide to pick one up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.